Hey everyone, Cody here at Vortex, and today we're talking long distance hunting with my Tika T3X 6.5 Creedmoor topped with a Viper HSLR 4 to 16 by 50. The reason why I really like this rifle is because it's well known reputation with the Tika name. It's actually manufactured in the same plant as Seiko rifles. It's very lightweight. Without anything on it, it's about six and a half pounds. It's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, so it's very capable of taking down deer, antelope, and even some bigger game like some elk, which I do have intentions doing with this rifle in the future. The additional features that really drew me to this rifle is its adjustable trigger, which from stock, it's down to two and a half pounds right now. So very lightweight, so I'm not trying to apply too much pressure into it, which would affect my point of aim downrange. Also, it's super smooth bolt action. You can effectively do it with one finger here makes great for follow-up shots if you need one. So as you can see here, I had a couple added features that I put on aftermarket myself. Up front here, I have a Magpul bipod. So if I do take this gun out into the Western field, let's say Colorado, Wyoming, out in the prairies, and I don't have anything to solidly hold the rifle on, I can easily lay down prone and throw out the legs on that and I have a nice, secure, stable platform to shoot off of. On the rear here, you can see that I have an additional cheek rest. This is from Bradley Cheek Rest. Couple reasons why I went with this. Number one, it's made out of Kydex, which is a very durable material. It has these removable Velcro straps, which are absolutely silent in the woods. And I can also take this off of this rifle and put it on a different one if need be. So the normal stock profile isn't high enough where I get a nice cheek rest behind the rifle. So that's why I added this on. As you can see, it's a little bit higher and I can get my eye directly behind the rifle scope. So branching off the consistency and accuracy of this rifle, I decided to go with the 140 grain Nosler ballistic tip ammunition. It has a very high ballistic coefficient at 0 .509, and it comes out of this rifle at 2598 feet per second, which by my calculations, it comes out to about 32 and a half MOA out of the Viper HSLR 4 to 16 by 50 rifle scope I have here to get out to a thousand yards accurately. So rounding out the accuracy of this rifle is the optic. The reason why I went with this optic is the quality of glass, which is in our premium glass line, and then also the adjustability of the elevation turret. So on here, it has a zero stop, which I'm able to set up where I can precisely come back to my zero after I dial up, let's say that 32 and a half minutes of angle for a thousand yard shot. I'm able to return right back to my zero and follow up with a hundred yard shot if need be. Another feature I really like about this optic is the capped windage. The elevation is uncapped, which it has a zero stop, so if it gets bumped, I can return to zero accurately. But the windage, because we don't want to limit travel from left to right, we want to make sure that it doesn't get bumped because we could lose where we are in the travel range and that could obviously have a major impact in our target's downrange. This optic comes with an adjustable parallax from 50 yards out to infinity. So for those close range shots, I'm able to do it precisely and see my target nice, crisp and clear, and then also engage those targets at long distances the same way. So moving along, I went with this optic also because of the magnification range, which is four to 16. I feel it's really optimal for 30 yard shots all the way out to a thousand plus yard shot. Locking it all down is a set of our Pro Series 30 millimeter low height rings on top of an EGW Picatinny rail. So there's a quick rundown of my Tika T3X, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, topped with a Viper HSLR 4 to 16 by 50. And if you have a specific gun or optic combo that you wanna see, drop a comment below, hit us up on social media, and you might just see it on the next episode of Scope This Gun.